Lawrence Korb is the former U.S. Assistant Secretary of Defense. He joins us now live from Washington for more on Perez's sometimes controversial legacy. Lawrence, thanks so much for joining us. Perez is remarkable My in that pleasure. you can get two entirely contradictory yet arguably correct views of the same man. He was a peacemaker, yet a hawk, and who at the same time built Israel's nuclear weapons program. How do you see him? Well, on balance, I think he was very good for Israel and really good for the, the Middle East. Did he act in Israel's interest sometimes, which would go against the, the interests of other, other people, other countries in the region? Yes. But you've got to remember, for example, he was the person who pushed Rabin to do the Oslo Accords. And had Rabin not been assassinated, we might not be having you know, the problems uh, that, uh, you know, that we have now. There's no doubt about the fact that, you know, he set up the arms agreement with France, which led to the development of uh, Israel's nuclear capacity. But again, I would argue that has probably kept us from having any major wars. You've got to remember in 67 and 73, you know, very, very many countries in the region attacked Israel. That hasn't happened uh, uh, since then. And I think in his later years, he tried to get, uh, you know, Prime Minister Netanyahu to be more forthcoming in, in, in dealing with the, with the Palestinian situation. So, yes, he was concerned about Israel's survival in the beginning, and he took steps to make it strong. But on the other hand, once they were in a position to negotiate, I think he was the one pushing it. But you think that nuclear we weapons program worked as a deterrent of sorts, but some say the United States actually had to compromise its own position because it couldn't or didn't stop Israel from developing that nuclear weapons program. Well, and I, it's important to keep in mind, we, did, we didn't want them to have it. The French put them on the road to doing it, and then finally we had to accept it. Uh, I don't think that we could have un did it because once people knew how to do it and had the material, there was no way we could, uh, you know, we could uh, get rid of it. And after the 73 war, the feeling was, okay, let them have it for a while, you know, here so we won't have any other wars. Now, I think, you know, what we need to do is you need to work on, you know, getting rid of all the nuclear weapons in the Middle, in the middle East, and hopefully if the Iran deal continues to be successful, then we'd be able, maybe be able to move a future Israeli government, you know, to uh, also join that. But, you know, they haven't done any testing or anything, in, in, you know, uh, on that. So, really, I think right now it, it does, to a certain extent, help keep the peace there. But you're right, eventually it'd be great if we get rid of them all in that area. And also, as we're having a big debate in the United States, whether we ought to, you know, adopt the no first use policy. Okay, Lawrence Korb, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us, as always, with your insights from Washington.